Hello everybody, this is JPICO Death checking in. Um, today we are going to be sharing with you my recipe for queso. It's been a recipe I've worked on for a number of years. It's been a family and a friend favorite for just as long. My hope is to show you how to change this, along with a few other ingredients, into this. There are infinite variations of this recipe based on your own personal preferences and the available ingredients. So I absolutely encourage you to play with this recipe, change it to fit your likes and needs. Uh, the quantities today are gonna be for making a full batch. Uh, I usually make these for a party of hungry people. Uh, the crock pot we're gonna use today is a six quart model. Uh, as before, uh, vary the amounts to fit your needs. Uh, if you needed to do uh, half, uh, for for not a giant gathering then that's absolutely okay too uh, we'll be using some of these things here bell peppers onions serrano peppers hot pork chorizo and Velveeta as some of our primary ingredients we'll also be using uh, milk shredded cheese green chili sauce uh, Worcestershire sauce cornstarch spices and a little bit of hot sauce at the very end now, um, I'm gonna warn you guys up front that the whole project was recorded on my phone uh, since I don't have a, a camcorder available. There will be some awkward angles or shots along the way, so do me a favor, try not to mind the range hood while we're working over the stove. It doesn't take up too much of the frame, so uh, again, apologies for that. Now, the whole recipe or the whole project is gonna take you uh, probably about a, a minimum of an hour to prep everything and cook it and put it together uh, if you're in a big hurry. Now, otherwise I build it over the course of a few hours, uh, leaving time after it's done to help the flavors meld together before, uh, before serving. Um, so at the very beginning of the project, we always get the cheese sauce melting. Uh, I, I'm gonna apologize right here up front. We might have a little bit of redundant audio and explanations along the way as well. I recorded this in pieces and parts, and I'm hoping I don't repeat myself, but um, unfortunately that footage is a week old, so we'll see how this goes for us. Best to start with two tablespoons of cornstarch and work it into the cold milk. Uh, do it kind of slowly so you don't get a bunch of clumping, but make sure it's fully integrated uh, before you move on. And uh, when the sauce heats up later, it's gonna to help to bind all the cheeses together that we're bringing in and just help all the pieces and parts stay together. Um, if you are in a hurry, you can warm the mixture up, but otherwise I just add it usually directly to the crock pot. Um, from here, we crumble up our Velveeta or our other processed cheese block, whatever you're using, uh, and crumble it into the milk and uh, the bigger the pieces are the slower they're going to melt so usually my cubes are uh, about half to three quarters of an inch square um, so if you're in a big big hurry you can take this cheese and the um, milk and melt them together like in the microwave to get them a head start before it ever touches the crock pot and maybe that'll save you some time if you really need it but uh, otherwise i just usually go the slow way but um, this is where my footage starts. So uh, what the hell, let's see what this does. Thanks for coming along. We will catch you all later. Okay, so lighting sucks over here, but we've got our four cups of milk with a couple of tablespoons of cornstarch stirred in. We've queued up, cubed up the cheese, uh, the, the Velveeta or other such product got it set into the crock pot because that is its final serving vessel and uh, we're also going to be adding uh, about probably three cups of a shredded cheese this is a, a taco mix I figure the right you know it's 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 constituted for uh, for baking or excuse me for melting well as well as having a few extra seasons in it so Every step of the way, we're going to take a little bit of extra flavor to the party. So we're going to put three cups of cheese into that and stir it all together and leave it on high in the crock pot to warm up and come together. And it's going to take a little bit of time unless you have, uh, sorry, unless you have preheated the, uh, the milk. So we'll get back to that in a little while. Okay, so what we have now is a five-quart sachet. 
and um, generally speaking, we do this in a, the whole project in a particular order. I have to admit, I'm kind of jumping around uh, because I'm doing the recordings the way that I am. So hopefully, this will all come together through the magic of editing. So um, we are going to take uh, usually the first steps. <coughs> excuse me. Usually, the first steps are to uh, get the cheese melting. Get the chorizo or other meat if you're using it cooking. I've used pork chorizo, I have used venison uh, chorizo, I've used plain beef, I've used all kinds of different things. But um, I like the flavor of chorizo and I think it really brings out um, a good flavor, a finished product of this, uh, of, the case, of the queso. So. We are going to uh, brown this up, render it down, and then we are going to be right back. So everybody knows how to cut vegetables, but we're going to use our sharp knife and we're not going to screw around with this thing. We're just going to get this all done. Um, as a general statement, uh, seeds when it comes to bell peppers are not always the tastiest thing on the planet. It can be kind of, kind of bitter, so you always want to make sure you're knocking those out get rid of them entirely. Um, because we're using these three different kinds of peppers, we're just going to get these chopped up real quick. And uh, get on with this thing. For me, when it comes to the queso, um, I do prefer these to be a little bit chunkier. Want there still be identifiable pieces once we're done with everything. So I don't want them giant, massive pieces where it's going to be an entire mouthful, but at least something where you're going to be able to help them. Hopefully, have them cook consistently and um, still have a good mouthfeel at the end of the day as well. vegetables I like to use I think this is an 8 inch santoku that's what this is it's a hankel it's a pretty good little knife I keep all my tools sharp I'm not screwing around with this thing we got work to do I don't have time to go to the hospital so I'm gonna keep cutting these up we'll see you in a minute so with our peppers chopped and set aside we're gonna get right into uh, the purple or red onions, whatever you like to call them. Um, I always go right down the middle and then I'm going to cut these, cut the, the top of the bulb off because we definitely don't need the tops so much. I'm going to get rid of all the extra paper and everything, clean these things up. Now I don't know how everybody else cuts their onions. I learned a trick a number of years ago that I like to use. Uh, when it comes to onions, and depending on the final product of the onion, what exactly you want it, or how fine you want it to be, there's a couple different ways that we can go about this. Um, so what we do is we leave the root end intact, and um, get kind of situate this onion so it's facing us with a cut in towards us, and then using the knife, we go through and we cut part way down, not all the way. Um, and in this case, I'm cutting them kind of in kind of wedge shapes. The ones on the outside are going to be close to the 3 8 or half an inch. And this is going across the rings at this point. And then we go to the other side, we twist it, and then we chop. And as it does, what we have is we end up with a slice, but all these slices are already broken up into smaller pieces. So it's a really fast way to get through this onion. Um, and make it into some more manageable sizes. So just roll down through here, chop these up, and then we discard the stem end. And if there's any more of these white pieces in the middle that you don't prefer, we can get rid of a couple of those as well. And then we're going to move on. See you in a minute. Okay, with the onions all chopped up, next we're going to move on to the serrano peppers. 
Um, I like serranos because they are a little bit warmer than jalapenos typically without being quite so ridiculous as to be a uh, an habanero or anything like that. Should be pretty good flavor with a uh, pretty decent heat. These ones that I've chosen are uh, about the size of my pinky, but the truth is um, a lot of people they have much smaller hands than me. So it's all a question of how much heat you want. You want to put habaneros in, you want to do something else, you go right ahead and you go ahead and do that. No shame at all, of course, this is going to be your queso, not my queso. So I don't have to eat whatever it is that you cook. So I'm going to nip the tips off of these guys. As always with peppers, be careful about what the heck you're doing with them. Keep your fingers away from your eyeballs. That is bad juju, I promise. Um, I just take and I split them, split them all down the middle. If I can get them to work. And then we'll uh, take a, a little spoon from my drawer. In this case, it's I think it's a teaspoon officially. Long-handled uh, spoon. Come on, you. The more curved they are, the more difficult they are to cut as well. And I'm just going to go ahead and scoop out um, a portion of these seeds. I'm going to leave a lot of the vein um, because there's a lot of warm uh, warmth in the vein, for lack of a better term, the heat. So by leaving um, the veins, you get a little bit of a, a warmer product. If you scoop everything on the inside out and just leave the outside shell, then you end up with um, a much cooler pepper at the end of the day. But if you leave the, the veins in, and especially if you leave the, se leave the seeds in, you'll end up with a, a much warmer pepper. So some people just want to do this whole. Other people are going to want to clean these up a little bit. It really depends on uh, who you're serving it to. I'll scoot those aside just for a second, just so I can show you how I do these. What we're going to do is we're going to take and we're going to smash this down a little bit, kind of flatten it out. We're going to turn these into, uh, we're going to julienne this. Little quarter inch matchsticks. Of course, careful not to nip your fingers. Definitely don't want to do that on camera or off. Let me take our little julienne sticks, and if you look at them this way, they're, they're about the size of a matchstick, maybe a little bit bigger. I mean, for anybody that still knows what a match is. And then we're going to take and we're going to dice those in the opposite direction. Of course, the larger these pieces are, the more heat they will bring for each bite you get them into. Uh, for me, I'm trying to spread these, uh, I think we got five peppers here, through the whole pot and let the heat kind of work through everything. So here we have just uh, diced those up into much smaller pieces. And I'm going to put those aside and uh, add everything all together separately in a little bit. So let me finish these up and I'll see you in a minute. Okay, so here we are back at the browning stage of this. Uh, this is almost done. It needs to be almost probably 100% done and out of the way. That way when it enters the pot, there won't be any additional cooking. It's just going to become queso at that point. Um, I try to keep the pieces small enough so that uh, everything can be fit onto a chip because this is after all for queso. If you want it bigger, if you want it smaller, you don't want it at all, this is the time uh, to, to decide what that is going to look like as far as a, a mouth feel. Um, but I do want them to be big enough chunks that they're noticeable, so that's why we got two pounds in here. So before my phone falls in to the uh, pot for a second time, I'm going to stop this recording and we'll be back in a minute to start on the vegetables. Okay, back again. <clears throat> uh, in this instance, I completely stopped the pot um, from a perspective of taking it off the heat, cleaning it, and bringing it back. I know for a fact that one of my uh, the friend of the family that we're going to a party this afternoon, uh, their daughter uh, happens to have gone vegetarian in the last couple of years. And before she went vegetarian, she really loved this queso. Um, in consideration of her and any other guests, I'm going to be taking out some of the queso before we get the chorizo added in. So I'm doing my best to keep this up to date, uh, kind of a vegetarian queso, until that chorizo hits the pot uh, at the very end. Um, here in the saucepan we have about four tablespoons of butter and about two tablespoons of olive oil. It's going to help us to cook these vegetables. If I were doing it for 
uh, without consideration for any kind of meat eater or excuse me vegetarians, uh, I would have actually used the some of the rendering, some of the fats left over from the chorizo uh, to cook the vegetables. So the ones that take the longest to cook are the peppers. We're going to give them a head start. Um, we've got this on kind of a medium high heat. And uh, all of my vegetables have been chopped and ready to go. So I wish I knew exactly how much I was putting in. The answer is a bunch because I'm making a big old pot. This is that full um, four peppers. And this is a, how big is the Pyrex bowl? According to the bottom, it is a 1.4 liter Pyrex bowl, and that was completely full of our peppers. Got two green, one orange, and one yellow. Uh, I didn't pick any reds today, not for any particular reason. I just, price-wise, it just worked out. Um, I use different peppers for a few different reasons. Uh, one, visually, you're going to get um, more color out of this. Uh, two is going to be for flavor, a little bit of a little, little bit different flavor profile for each of these. I'm going to uh, add some salt. I use kosher salt that I keep to hand. So I'm going to put a couple good pinches on this. It'll help draw some of the moisture out and uh, start adding flavor down to this bottom layer. I'm also going to crunch up some pepper on it. I have a mill here I use. I'm going to use it on a, a medium grind just to start adding flavor all the way down to this level. Um, I come out of a kitchen. Uh, I spent a few years there doing a number of different things, working in a restaurant, and uh, I used to love, love to watch cooking shows. And, you know, I still do sometimes, but uh, one of the most important things I picked up along the way is any time you have a chance along the way to flavor a product, take it, use it. All right, so the peppers have had about a three or four minute head start here. Uh, admittedly, I got a little bit carried away. Um, I'm using my telephone to record this footage, and I was, I hate to say it, running out of space. So this is actually going to be about one and a half of those onions we had earlier. Um, Two seemed like too much, so I wish I knew an exact count on this. I'm saying that I'm putting in a one quart bowl. It was full almost all the way up. Like I said, it was one and a half onions. Now we're gonna get these mixed through. We're gonna let them keep cooking down. You know, if you don't like the red onion, that's fine. Purple, whatever you want to call them, but um, I really like a the kind of the flavor they bring and B, the color they bring. Uh, because we are going to put this whole thing inside of a cheese sauce and it's, um, you know, the, the little bits of color that we can get into it are going to be noticeable. Might be strange to say, but there it is. Alright, so we'll give this a couple minutes and then we're going to add our peppers, or uh, excuse me, our hot peppers, our serranos. Back in a flash. Okay, hopefully you can see that the um, onions have started to render it down a little bit. We're going to lose a little bit of their color. So it's only been a couple minutes. We're going to get these serranos in here now. And uh, you might be able to tell I'm using my hands on this. Go wash these darn things before you stick them in your eyes. I've honestly had circumstances where three hours later I rubbed my face and suddenly my, I got back on pepper spray. So think about it. All right. Um, so about a minute ago, I added in uh, about three tablespoons of minced garlic. Um, I'm a little bit lazy. I like to keep it in a jar in the fridge. Um, if you want to use fresh, by all means, go ahead. But that is something I just I don't go through it fast enough or often enough. Be concerned about it. So at this point we've got um, bell peppers, uh, then we put the onions, serranos, uh, a little bit of garlic, and now I'm going to add um, a seasoning that is something that I make myself. Um, this is kind of my all-purpose 
um, Mexican seasoning, for lack of a better term. But um, pretty much anything that I, I like from a, a flavor perspective, you know, the salt, the pepper, um, garlic, onion, cumin, a lot of the things you're going to find in like a, um, a taco seasonings kind of packet. It's similar to that, but, uh, but different, not quite so heavy on the uh, chili powder. But I add this to almost everything that I cook that is Mexican food. Um, and here in a minute I will uh, show you the jar. Admittedly, this little container that I have is um, just about out. So I'll see you guys in a few minutes after this is uh, run it down just a little bit more and then we'll pull it off the heat. Okay guys, so here we are at the end. Uh, we are getting some caramelization on these and this is where I'm going to cut the heat and be done with this. Um, I want to still have some t texture to all of this. I'd like them all to be identifiable as themselves um, while still being a, a piece of the case all together. I'm going to put a, a list of all the different spices uh, in the video through the magic of editing and um, you know, the stuff that goes into it. This is also going to be going very soon into our, sorry for the glare there, into our actual queso itself, into the, the cheese mix, uh, which is just about ready. So we will catch you guys soon. All right, folks, let's get down to final assembly. Uh, up to now, we've had all our pieces and parts coming together. We've got uh, all the cheese in. It has been melted down, looking beautiful. The Velveeta and the shredded have all come together real nice. <clears throat> um, I did at some point end up adding a couple of extra cups of cheese, two, mu two extra cups of cheese because um, it wasn't quite, um, wasn't quite, I guess, big enough. Uh, what's the right word here? Um, it's not right. It wasn't quite thick enough. The cheese wasn't. Um, now, at this point, we have only basically milk, um, the Velveeta, the shredded, and seasonings in there, as well as some um, cornstarch to help hold this all together. Um, right now what we're going to add is, usually I would recommend somewhere in the neighborhood of about two to four cups of your favorite green chili. Um, in this instance, once again, we're keeping it vegetarian, so this is actually just a pre-made chili sauce that is um, 505 is the brand. And um, we're going to add that directly to the cheese sauce and get that mixed in real quick. And then we're going to be very, very soon here worried about overflowing our pot. So this is the, the biggest crock pot I have. But um, in go the giant pile of vegetables. And up this puppy gets. More and more full by the moment. So since we are keeping this vegetarian friendly, everything to this point has has been meat free. Um, so here in a second, I'm going to remove some of this for the vegetarians, and uh, then we'll add the chorizo in, which I suppose is good news. It'll make us some room in our pot. So we're gonna get this all integrated through. Um, at this point, we also add some Worcestershire sauce. It, it really kind of helps um, all cheese sauces a little, be a little more robust, a little better flavor. Um, and that's probably about two, two teaspoons or so. Not a whole heck of a lot. It just helps to, to really kind of bring out some of the, the cheese flavors. So we're going to put this on hold for a minute, and I will see you guys um, after... Uh, I guess when we're ready to put the uh, chorizo in. Okay, now for the final bit. Uh, we have removed what we needed for our vegetarian friends. We have our um, prepared chorizo drained. Uh, try to get as much of the oil off of it as you can because you don't want to have a real oily and greasy queso. Um, and then just kind of integrate it in. The funny thing about this queso is it is literally never the same two times uh, because I am constantly changing, constantly evolving, constantly trying to figure out 
what I have to hand and what I like to to see here. Um, you know, and it's going to be different for you based on what you have. You know, maybe instead of just a regular green chili sauce, you're going to use a pork green chili. Maybe you don't like it at all, and you're going to use straight green chilies instead of a, an actual sauce or a, a um, you know, like I said, a pork green chili. But the most important thing about the queso is remember that whatever you put into it, um, if all the flavors are good individually, then when they come together, they're going to be great. So work as you go. Taste your cheese sauce. Taste your vegetables. Um, and then by the time you get down to it at the end here, you're going to have a really meaty, um, you know, in this instance, a really meaty and uh, full of vegetables. So we're going to leave this thing cooking for a little while. It's got about an hour and 20 minutes before the party, so it's going to have a good opportunity to sit and meld in the pot. Um, as a very last thing, I'm going to actually get a chip over here. These are the, these are the same kind of chips that I'm going to be eating, uh, serving with the queso here in a little bit, so this is going to be a very accurate representation of what we're up against. A little taste test here. That is pretty tasty. I think I'm just going to put a little bit more of my um, seasoning mix in and um, have a teeny bit of, um, of a hot sauce in the, uh, in the fridge too I'm going to throw in there um, just to give it a little more punch. Anyway, um, this is my Super Bowl Sunday queso that I'm throwing together and um, I hope you guys uh, have a great week or whatever and we'll see you on the next one. If you do try it, or variations, or have any thoughts about this, let me know. Catch you next time.